Great, thank you for that. And uh, hi, everyone, and thank you for joining. Um, my name is Cormac Foster, as you've heard a couple of times now. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm really excited today to show you a bit of what makes GitLab's single application approach to delivering the DevOps platform special. Over the last 25 years or so, I have worked for a lot of technology companies, and um, that approach is exactly why I'm here uh, right now. Um, I will try to keep the slide presentation fairly short, then head into the product itself so you can see how that shakes out in the real world. And again, please ask your questions throughout. I'll try to reserve some time at the end for it. If we don't get to them, we will follow back up with you with an answer. So let's get going. So uh, first, let's talk about the problem. Um, for those of you who answered five or more, or uh, potentially the folks who answered, I don't know, this will probably look familiar. but. When you see most DevOps visualizations in a textbook or marketing copy, uh, it's usually represented as kind of a, a left to right diagram of stages or an infinity diagram, which we have, and you'll see that in a second too. Um, and that is the right way to think about the process, I think, but it's a, not necessarily the right way to think about what the tools actually look like. They often look a lot more like this. So in this image, you have multiple tools to support all of those things we just asked you about, you know, project planning and creating the code and testing it and CI and deployment and security and monitoring and everything you need to do to take that idea and turn it into software in the hands of users. Um, they all need to function. Uh, that's the first thing. All of these things need to be kept running and they need to communicate. Ideally, any one of those tools should be able to communicate with any other tool. Uh, so that you can have a steady flow of information. But at the very least, they need to be able to connect to the tools um, that they would sit next to in that end-to-end -end diagram. Um, and, that, and that's something that uh, you're going to need to uh, potentially build or at least maintain yourself. So that's the first problem you encounter is just the, the overall cost of this integration complexity. So you need to um, not only you know, design and build and maintain the integrations potentially, um, you need to manage upgrades. Uh, you may need to establish high availability and disaster recovery for each one of those with a separate plan. Um, those integrations can fail on you. They're fairly brittle in many cases, if they're, especially if, they're, if you're doing something kind of new or novel and you're out there on, on the leading edge of that and you are on the hook for maintaining that or you're paying a very large sum of money to someone else to do it. So the second problem uh, that comes up from all of that is time. Even if you have all the money in the world, you're losing time and it's time from people who um, may not do this as part of their core job. In many cases, uh, they may be developers or operations folks uh, who, who really could be doing something more productive and more fun and something that they were actually hired to do. Um, so that's, that's, that's a lot of time you're going to lose and a lot of productivity that you're going to lose from it. Um, and then finally, I think you're, there's, there's visibility. Every one of these connections is a potential choke point, whether that's a plugin or an API. If it's something someone else has created, there may be a limit to how much information can pass through and how much information you can query. So you may need something from a tool that the creators of the API never really thought of and you may not be able to get that. So what that means is that people working in other tools may not have the full picture of a story, which means that you have emails going back and forth and Slack messages and a bunch of stuff that should be happening within your tools that isn't happening within your tools. And uh, that's, that's a big problem, a, an even bigger problem if you work in uh, our, an industry where compliance and you know, regulations generally are, are a big thing. So this can make a lot of sense uh, to build when there's no other option and when you're early in a in the life cycle of a technology. So uh, 25 years ago, um, when I was fresh faced and, and new, I was working at a company called CNET.com, editorial company, they're still around. And we built our own content management and publishing and caching system. And we did that because at, at that point, everyone was just using static HTML files where our design and our, you know, our presentation logic and our content were in, in, in one document. And that was really lousy for doing things like syndicating content to partners or uh, changing your design on the fly or all the things that we wanted to do to be competitive. So we built our own system and it was a competitive advantage for us, but we also became an infrastructure company and that took a lot of resources. So a few years later, we actually sold that system to a software vendor that then sold it as a product and we became, uh, we made some money on the sale, which was great. And then 
we became customers of that product. So we didn't have to maintain that anymore and we could focus on our business. Now, these days, no one is going to build that system themselves in the publishing industry because there are just too many good, solid platforms out there. And that's what's uh, that's what I think personally is happening with the DevOps industry right now. Um, the platforms are, you know, are well. I'll just speak to, to us. Our single app platform is mature enough so that you don't have to do all of that. So these problems that you're experiencing, if you're experiencing those problems, if you're in the five plus category, those are only gonna get worse because we are broadening the concept of what a DevOps team is. So security and business teams are critical to software development. They're stakeholders in this kind of software value chain, but traditionally they've been left on the outside. They're things that have happened before the process to the left, or in this case above and after the process. So integrating those folks into the system is going to be, those are going to be additional points of integration, additional visibility problems you're going to have if it isn't already built in there to start with. And a lot of these tools, uh, especially some of the open source ones are uh, legacies, you know, an easy word to throw around. And uh, I don't know, I, I try to avoid it, but a lot of these, uh, these were purpose-built systems that didn't really take that into perspective. And again, you're going to have to manage uh, developments that are that are kind of on the cutting edge. Okay, so that brings us to the idea of delivering your DevOps platform as a single application, you know, without all those choke points and multiple points of failure. So GitLab has been doing this since the beginning. It's who we are, but we've recently seen increased interest in that approach. Gartner recently coined the term value stream delivery platform or VSDP to describe that sort of system. Uh, something that provides everything you need to create, deliver, visualize, manage all of your value in that SDLC and get it out to the people who need it. So we will send uh, each of you a link to a free copy of the report after this session. If you haven't read it, uh, it's, it's really a good read. And it's not about us specifically, it's about the category uh, into which we fit. But we're really happy that the industry has reached the point where they're recognizing the approach that we take as, as a category and a way forward. And finally, I think it's important to note that while we want to give you everything you need to run DevOps in one place, we don't want to tell you where that place should be. If you want to run it on your cloud or our cloud or on-prem behind a firewall, you know, on a Raspberry Pi, that's entirely up to you. We run the same software in every location. So you get a few more admin features if you're running a self-managed instance versus kind of the multi-tenant hosted instance that we provide on GitLab.com but the core software is the same. So your user experience is the same. You're not going to have any surprises. And again, you should be able to run your company and your development your way. Uh, we have customer stories on the website at the URL at the bottom of every page, but I'll just quickly call it three outcomes directly related to that platform approach. Uh, BI Worldwide started with uh, GitLab for source code management and continuous integration delivery but the single app platform meant they could adopt other aspects of automation like security, like easily without friction, they could just light that up. Glimpse got rid of 20 different tools and replaced them with GitLab. Good news for those of you using five or more. And then finally, Goldman Sachs went from a bi-weekly build and release cadence to merging and testing more than 1000 builds per day. And that kind of velocity brings a bunch of other benefits, which we'll talk about later. So there are real world benefits to this. Um, now let's look at why, but I encourage you to check out that page. So there are lots of things I can't show you today. Uh, be happy to demo any of them for you in the future. Just reach out to us and we'll, we'll get that set up. But today I'd like to focus on two things, uh, visibility and actionability. So like those tools and that Frankenstack in the beginning, you know, GitLab also has dashboards and metrics and role specific interfaces. You know, your security team won't be using the same interfaces as your product managers most of the time, but they will want to see data from those tools, uh, from those other interfaces and other areas of the business. Um, unlike those other tools in the, the, the stack earlier, all of ours share a common data store and a common UX. So everything's stored in the same place and it's all one application. So you can connect from anywhere in the app to anywhere else in just a few clicks, as I'll show you. And since GitLab is also where you do your work, it's where the code lives and where the code changes live. That means that you can not just you know, view the work uh, top down, but contribute to it. So quickly, here are some examples of what those interfaces look like. We have analytics of your pipelines. 
We have roadmap views of key initiatives with drill downs into sub projects and work items. We'll demo that. Uh, we have high level metrics to just benchmark how well your agile processes are being adopted in the organization. And that uh, I'll, I'll call this out because it's something that would normally take a ton of integration just to get those high level metrics because each one of these columns here could be a separate tool. Um, at our 2020 virtual commit event, which is available on YouTube, Rolls-Royce talked about how this interface was actually really helpful to them as they moved a group onto GitLab and onto Agile processes. So they actually used this interface to benchmark their own progress and their own success in their Agile transformation. Uh, we have lots of out-of-the-box reporting. Uh, because it is a single app, we can, we can give you this reporting without integration. So you just turn it on, start using it. We've got a ton of data that we can surface. Um, so very briefly, we allow you to cut issues um, that you've created by time period, by you know, a number of factors to monitor your productivity and your throughput. Uh, we'll see that a little bit. Um, Insights provides a really flexible way to monitor any workflow that you can label. And it comes with pre-canned reports out of the box for things like bug reports. Uh, we have reporting around velocity and productivity of your developers. We have uh, a more detailed view of work in progress to help you identify work that might be stalling. And again, all of this is available from day one with no integration because we're a single app with that end-to-end -end visibility. Um, we have a report that reaches across issues, which would normally be in something like a project management system, and then your code commits that might be in your source code management system, and then your deploys, which could come from a third system that you use for, you know, CD, to give you this kind of detailed but well-rounded stat about your team. So we pull that all together, again, automatically without needing to build those integrations. And then here we're taking a lot of that same information, but we're surfacing it in a way that allows your ops team to understand what they need to know about what's going on. So again, same data store, different visualization of it, but all connected. And then here's a dashboard uh, designed for the security team. Um, but what's neat about this is that they receive that information about vulnerabilities as soon as those are introduced. As soon as the code is committed, we're running security tests, and the results of those security tests are going to the, uh, to the folks uh, in the security department through this dashboard. They're also getting surfaced, as we'll see in the demo, back to the, um, the person who introduced them so that they can learn from that and make changes as well. Um, and then it's really easy, as we'll see again in the demo, to trace these back to the precise commit where they were created. So you don't have to spend a week kind of untangling spaghetti code built on top of other code. And you can just you know quickly figure out what the root cause was, undo that and 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 get going again with you know before it gets complicated. And with that, uh, enough slides. Let's see how this actually works in real life. So I'm going to switch over to gitlab.com right now as I switch the share. Um, and I will be pulling from live projects that we use to run our business. So at GitLab, everyone uses the product, including my organization, Marketing. So what you're going to see is a system that really can be used by a cross-functional team in a production setting. So if I can use it, you can use it. So uh, someone once said, it's, it's so simple, even a marketer can do it. And as a marketer, I, 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 I can't deny that. So let's share that screen there. Okay, great. So to show you the value of a single DevOps platform, I'd like to show you a few different experiences from different types of users as they work within a single system. So to start with, let's say I am a CMO or I manage a you know, product development and I want an overview of how multiple projects are progressing toward quarterly goals or monthly goals, or in this case, what we're showing here, uh, this is the quarterly map, but I could just as easily you know, break that down by, by months or weeks. I can look at things by you know, sprint or whatever time box construct um, I want there. So uh, in this case, uh, I have uh, searched on a string of use case. Now that's what we call our campaigns in marketing. So here you can see um, there's a use case go to market overview. Within that, the continuous delivery use case go to market. Uh, I can see here that that is 58% uh, complete. Now that may be all I need, in which case I can look at it. I can open this up and say 58% complete. Looks like it's on track and I can go about my business. Or um, if I want to know more, I can just, click in, 
get more information. I can look at sub epics. I can look at the projects that are sitting within this. Um, I can look at individual issues that might be sitting within this. Um, and again, that may be all I need, but let's say I want to uh, dive deeper into that. I can then go into one of them. In this case, I'll go into the use case GTM overview epic. Um, and this is, this is a view of the epic, which contains sub epics as well. Again, these could be whatever you want. They could be products or projects or any initiatives that you would want to um, uh, create at a high level that would be used to organize um, other work. So um, here I can look and see that um, here in my uh, VC and C version control and collaboration use case, um, there's one issue that needs my attention. So I can open that up, see what's going on, see that that issue is in the resource page and it's in solution demos. Okay, so from there, in just a couple of clicks, I've gotten into a, a detailed, say, project or initiative, and I can see that there's something going on. Now, if I go into the issue itself that, that had the notification, what I'm looking at here is uh, I can see pretty quickly that there's a due date of May 8th. So somebody slipped a due date or someone forgot to close this out or something happened and um, I need to know the context behind that. So I know whether this is just something that's an oversight where I can remove that due date or if um, I, you know, somebody's in trouble. So what I can do here is uh, you know, all of that collaboration that happened around this is in one document, it's in this issue. So I can look down, I can see that there was a bunch of collaboration I can see that ultimately this was closed seven months ago. So it was closed on time. It looks like someone just forgot to, um, to update the due date, but I can also see that there was a code change or a merge request. What we call uh, the merge request is uh, the code change in the workspace around that that is attached to that. So that's a merge request right here. And I can see that that was actually committed the pipeline passed and this code was, uh, and this code was you know, pushed live. So I can then click into that merge request. And in one spot, I can see here are all the code changes that were made to all the files that were changed. So if I really wanted to dig in from with that context I had and say, okay, what was changed? You know, here's the copy that was there. Here's what it was changed to all the way down. I can see the pipelines that ran from all of those, those code changes and what happened to them. Did anything break and it didn't get pushed to the website? Uh, I can see the individual commits that happened. Uh, every person who, who made a change to that and pushed that. Um, so I can then say, I see that a problem happened here during this commit, I'm going to roll that back. Uh, and then again, the overview, there is uh, collaboration as well. So this is collaboration that happened in the workspace itself uh, so that is always going to be tied back to the issue that, that spawned it as well. So with just a couple of clicks, I can go from this into the actual code changes. And when I talk about actionability, that's, that's what I meant. So there's visibility, there's you know, having a Power BI dashboard that tells you whether things are on track, um, but that's not necessarily connected to anything. And usually the output of that is I need to send an email to someone to say, what's the problem with this or make this happen. Um, but what we have here is the ability to just drive all the way into the work, should I choose to go all the way into the work. And then I can unblock things myself. I can assign this to someone new. I can make a comment. I can approve a code, a, a code change. And if you're in a, you know, a smaller company, perhaps where you're wearing multiple hats, uh, this is what you do on your, you know, your daily job. You don't want to be context switching, uh, you know, and and looking at high level reporting here, and then trying to, you know, search through files to find out where that change was made, and then going into a third system to tell someone that they need to go take a look at this. Um, you want to be able to do that all in one place. So that's what we mean when we say actionability. Um, one other thing I'd like to point out when you look at an issue over here, we have something called labels. So labels are really neat. I'm a, I'm a big fan of labels because they're super flexible and super powerful. Um, a label is a customizable attribute uh, that GitLab users can apply to issues, but also to merge requests, that code change we just saw in that workspace, or to epics. So you can define whatever classification you want. So here we have this identified as something of interest to the strategic marketing team. 
It's also a to-do that should probably be removed given that we've already established that this uh, is already done. Um, and then we have something here, so marketing status plan. Um, and that's what we call a scoped label. Uh, so scoped labels are mutually exclusive labels that you can use to create. So let's just say we go to marketing status. So you can see here their um, marketing status, work in progress, plan, design, review. Now, these are mutually exclusive. So if I mark this as marketing status review, it's going to remove the marketing status plan label. Uh, one of the great things that you can do with something like this is you can model a custom workflow. So let's say I'm back at CNET and uh, we have an editorial workflow where I'm going to create a document and then I'm, uh, I'm going, so we'll have a, a writing stage or a spec stage, a writing stage, a copy edit, an edit, a copy edit and a design stage. And then we'll have something, some kind of publishing stage, final review or something like that. Um, I can create these very simply um, as, as these scoped labels here. And when a document moves from one stage to another, the new label gets applied the old label automatically gets um, gets removed and I can track that. All of these labels are things I can search on, I can sort by, and then I can track in something that we have here called insights. So insights um, allows you to track anything you can label um, in issues. So um, this is a live uh, dashboard that we use in the strategic marketing department in which product marketing sits. So. Um, here we're looking at the volume of requests coming into strategic marketing um, by, by status. You know, are these new? Are they in the triage state? Have they already been assigned? Are they done? Um, we have a number of things we're tracking here. Again, uh, is this for competitive intelligence? Is this something that goes to the tech marketing team? Is this something that goes to product marketing? Now within product marketing, we've also created our own reports where we can look at different labels. So labels like, you know, what's open and closed? Um, are, these, are these going to be external facing? Are they internal facing projects we're working on? Uh, is it something else? So again, anything you can label, there are a ton of different things we can look at with labels here. Who are we doing this for? Are we doing it for sales? We're we doing it for public relations. Um, whatever this means to you, you can label. And once you can label it, you can visualize it because it's all one system. And again, labels can be applied not just to issues, but to merge requests and epics. So you can search across different kinds of work and different categorizations of work and get to where you need to get to. Um, so labels are great. Um, I am, again, a huge fan. But I also wanted to show you something called uh, value stream analytics because we don't want you to have to write something custom to start tracking your productivity. So because we are a single, uh, a single application for everything you're doing and because the work is actually happening here in GitLab, uh, value stream analytics just runs. As soon as you start pushing issues and merge requests and, and code through the system, this is going to start tracking that information. So let's just assume for instance, that I am something like, I'm a development manager and I want to be able to identify uh, blockages in the delivery of value to, to my end users. And then I wanna do something about that. So I can see here, you know, how many commits I'm doing over the last 30 days, how many deploys we're doing, um, deployment frequency, total number of deploys, and, and how many new issues are coming in. So that's great at a top level. That's that's very useful information that, that uh, I'm probably going to reference on a daily basis. But I can also look at the workflow. So what we've done here is created a default set of steps that we feel reflects um, a large portion of the uh, software development lifecycle for most of our customers. And this is what you get out of the box. So I can see that, um, you know, in this case, it's taking me less than a minute uh, to create an issue. Great. Uh, that might sit uh, with someone in, in the planning stage where an issue is being worked on or revised um, for a day. Um, and then it takes three minutes to make some of these code changes. So these code changes here, since we're dealing with uh, the public website, a lot of these are probably just copy, copy edits, small changes, that sort of thing. Uh, it goes through a testing process, but you know, look at this, 18 hours. Things are sitting in review for 18 hours. Um, and some of these are very small code changes that only took three minutes to make. So you could probably review these 
very quickly. So, you know, overall, it's taking me, you know, a couple of days to get these changes out, which doesn't sound so bad. But if I could assign a few more people to review code, then I could potentially start delivering that, you know, four or five or six times as fast because uh, at least after the issue is live and people start coding, because the vast majority of my time is being spent there. Now, since we're connected again, I can look at something. So this, for instance, this has been in there for four days. So one of the contributing, um, one of the contributing merge requests, I can jump in there. I can look around, I can see what the changes were, I can comment on these, you know, so I could, for instance, say, you know, why are we doing this? And I could, you know, make a suggestion instead where I suggest something else. And then I could start a review from that and someone could accept that or reject that or I could push it along or do whatever it is I need to do. Uh, and all of that, again, from what would otherwise be an analysis only tool in another, in an, you know, that required an, an integration underneath it to actually get that information into one place. So not only can I see it, but I can do something with it. And then finally, I'll skip to a project that has less information, but I have, uh, I have greater permissions on this particular one. Um, if this doesn't work for you, you can hide the stage. You can just make it disappear. I won't do that now because other people are still using this project, but I could, I could get rid of any of these that I don't like or that don't match what I'm doing. I can also add a stage. So I could call this, let's say it's from issue created to issue label added. Um, and let's say I wanted to call this category, categorization, fine, you know, Authorization. Um, and I could add that as a stage if it really mattered to me. Though, how long does an issue sit in a queue before someone says, oh, that's what this is, and they do their triage and they assign a label to it. And that would show up there and I could order that stage however I wanted. So um, while we do want to give you tools out of the box, we don't want to constrain you to using those tools if they aren't going to fit for what you do. The same way that we want to give you a DevOps platform, but we don't want to tell you what you know, where you want to run that because it's your business, it's not ours. So uh, we'll give you a place to get started, um, but we want you to be able to build on that. Um, and then we were talking about MRs earlier. Uh, one last thing I wanna show you, um, the merge request, again, your changes, your pipelines that have run, the different commits, and then any collaboration that happens there. If I say, you know, this is a great idea, this is a bad idea, I'm going to upvote this or downvote this, I can do all of that sort of stuff. And again, I can label it just like I could with an issue. Um, but what's, um, what's, I think the best part of this to me is that we showed you the interface that might be the, the kind of go-to interface for someone who's a product manager or CMO. This is probably the go-to interface in most cases for a developer because developers are committing code all day and they're interacting, they're either reviewing other people's code as we just saw, or other folks are reviewing their code and they need to collaborate that, explain what they did, accept some changes, make some new changes, that sort of thing. Um, now, when I'm a developer and I do one of these commits here, it's going to run a pipeline and that pipeline is going to include tests. Now in GitLab, we include the ability uh, in the product to run security tests of various sorts. Uh, you know, static application scanning where we're looking for, you know, standard vulnerabilities in the code, dynamic application uh, scanning where we will actually automatically create what we call a review app where we, we set up a uh, we set up a running instance of your application so that we can then test from the outside against that. Um, and all of those results, um, so all the results of that, so the scans run every time you commit code and all of those results uh, wind back in the same system in the interface that you're already using. So the security folks are going to see the results of security scans, but so are you. So here, if I'm a developer, um, I can see that we've detected three potential vulnerabilities. None of them in this case are critical. That's great. Um, I can see, I can then, if I want a DAS dynamic scanning detected four high level vulnerabilities, I can click into that for more information. Uh, two license and policy violations, all these things that normally would take forever to unpack 
because they're going to get pushed along and people are going to build on top of that code until security finally looks at the output and says, wait, there's a problem. And then that could take anywhere from hours to weeks to figure out. And you might have to do, undo a whole lot of work. Um, one and so I, as a developer, I can make this fix right now before it goes any farther. It makes me a better developer. I learn, so I won't do that again. Um, but it also saves all that time and money. And then finally, if you're audited, this is wonderful. I don't know how many of you have been audited before, but uh, I've worked at companies that have been audited and it's a terrible experience for everyone, including the auditors. You know, the auditors show up, spend two weeks trying to figure out what you do. Then they spend another month trying to figure out where you didn't do what you normally do. And then they interview you for another two weeks about what went wrong and how to fix that. And in this case, I can hand this merge request over to an auditor and I can say, Here's, you know, you can trace this back to the issue, the discussion that created the merger that ultimately led to the merge request. You can see every code commit, you can see the impact of every one of those. You can see all of the vulnerabilities that were exposed, you can see how they were fixed. And if they weren't fixed, you can see why and you can see who signed off on it and what that means. And if I'm an auditor, this just made my day and I can move on to do something else very quickly and everybody wins. So um, again, these are just examples of how uh, visibility and actionability really work well with a single app DevOps platform. There's a ton more that we can do. There are some great demos we have out there on things called auto DevOps, where you can spin up your entire DevOps process um, just kind of out of the box. It's essentially push button DevOps. Um, there's a lot more we could talk about and we'd be happy to, but now I will stop the share and be happy to take any questions. All right, excellent. Thanks so much, Cormac. Uh, let's see, I know that we've got some questions already. Bear with me just a second. Pull up my doc here. All right, uh, first question we have is, can I use the rest of GitLab with Jira? We are using Jira right now and that is not something that we can change at the moment. Uh, so yes, absolutely. So. Um... Thank you for asking that actually, because uh, we do have a, a platform deployed as a single app, but this is not one of those, uh, I won't name companies, but back in the 90s, there were several companies that would sell kind of platforms as lifestyles where you would have to adopt everything and then they would, you know, you buy the software for half a million dollars and they'd sell you a million dollars of teaching you how to turn it on and you'd have to rip and replace everything. So this is absolutely not that. Um, we have a lot of customers who are working with uh, Jira um, and other tools. And in some cases, they, uh, you know, Jira just works for them and they would prefer to use Jira. And, you know, that's great if there's a, a long term coexistence kind of thing. We, we um, actually in the last few months, we've come out with several new integrations with Jira and we want our users to be happy to be able to view GitLab issues, for instance, inside of Jira and the results of those security scans inside of Jira and the kinds of things that um, would otherwise take, again, a lot of integration effort on your part. Uh, and then we have some folks who say that, you know, whatever, whatever tool that is, is something that, you know, I, I, I like the value of this, this platform, but, um, you know, for the foreseeable future or for these projects, I don't want to, um, to move off of that yet. And, and that's something as well. We see a lot of those kind of hybrid environments where new projects might be uh, entirely on GitLab and others might have, uh, you know, a, a different kind of architecture behind them. And we can absolutely do that. Awesome. I'm going to just keep moving along. And if anyone else has questions, please feel free to go ahead and continue to add those to Q&A and we will get to as many of them as we can. Next question, we are trying to initialize our first repo. Can you offer some recommendations on how to handle secrets for Kubernetes? Um, I am, I, so yes, uh, I am not the right person to talk about secrets management. We have a whole, um, ops and GitOps ops team that, uh, that does that, but we can follow up with the, the right person for that. There's a, there's a, a fellow on the marketing team named William Chia, who, uh, who, um, does a lot with that. Um, but we have, we have a number of folks from our solutions architects to, um, to product marketing, to the actual product managers themselves, who can give better answers than I can. Awesome, appreciate that answer. And I have made a note for the individual that um, asked that question and we will get an answer to you and direct you to William. Uh, next question, do you have the chance to view a side-by-side -side view of the changes instead of interweaved? Can you comment on a peer review in line with the code to ask questions? Uh, yes and yes. So. Um, 
And we actually offer as well um, a web IDE that um, you know people, the developers love their IDEs and, and their editors and, and are very wedded to them. Um, but sometimes you just want something that you know will always be there and will run. And uh, so our web IDE is great, particularly if you're making, you know, some people will spend their whole day in there, but if you're just making a quick change to a file, that sort of thing, um, and you don't want to um, to spin up, but in some cases, some of those IDEs are pretty monstrous. Uh, we have that, and the web IDE actually has that functionality integrated into it as well. Um, so yes, and you uh, and you absolutely can comment on those those code changes as well. Uh, we have the very long discussion threads that go on um, in MRs. All right, continuing along, do you offer consultant services to help establish an initial repo? Uh, we have a demonstration product that works locally but fails when deployed. Uh, so yes, again, there are other folks who would probably have a better answer to that, but we do have a professional services arm. Uh, we do not want to be, we are not a services company in the way that some other folks are where, you know, the product exists to sell you the services, but we do have professional services to help with things. We also have, um, you know, customer success managers and solutions architects who can show you those sorts of things. And we have a number of partners um, at various levels who do various, who, who build on top of GitLab in, in different ways. So uh, there are probably a number of ways to answer that question and we can put you in touch with someone who can answer that um, more accurately in terms of what makes most sense for your situation. Okay. Next question, uh, how can I integrate GitLab with a chaos engineer platform such as Gremlin? Um, we actually did a partner webcast with AWS and Gremlin in September. Uh, I've actually sent the link to that recording in the slide deck over for that question. So um, because we're kind of running up against time, I'd like to get to the last two questions here before we close. Uh, next question, is this a hosted solution or is it only on cloud for government work? There are certain programs we are not allowed to use cloud for anything. It has to be hosted on site. Do you have options? Absolutely, you have options. And we have a number of government clients. Uh, you can run this. Uh, in just about any cloud. Um, so uh, you can run in just about any cloud. Um, and again, you can run it in our cloud as well. For you, it sounds like that would not be an option, but uh, we have, um, I believe hundreds of thousands of self-managed instances running right now. Uh, so you can absolutely run this on-prem. All right, let's get to our last question and we will wrap up. What is the minimum subscription level to modify the stages you showed adding and removing some in the cycle analytics? Um, oh, that is a, you know what? I, so value stream analytics exists at all levels of the product. And to be honest, I will, I will confirm that. Uh, I will confirm uh, that right, right after this and get right back to you. Uh, very, very good question. I, I, but I don't want to, I think I know the answer, but I don't want to be wrong. So there may have been a move lately. So I will, I will check that. That is totally fair. Awesome. Well, um, thank you everyone for joining today. If there was a question that Cormac was not able to get to, I have taken notes here and we will reach out directly to you with specific answers for those. So we really appreciate the questions. We appreciate everyone being here today. Just a reminder, this was recorded and this will go out to everyone uh, on today's call in the next few days. Um, so with that said, thank you all for joining. Have a wonderful day and we hope to see you soon. Thank you.